My name is Rafa Garcia. I'm a project manager at Rana Creek, and I'm here to discuss reusing gray water and storm water. So right now, your money is going down the drain drop by drop. And California is still suffering from a drought because we still use more water than can be naturally replenished. And all of this overdrawing of water is causing salt water to intrude along the coastlines. And our water bills are only going up. So when I looked at my water bill, I noticed from last month, my water bill doubled. So I was going, what is going on? So the more water I use, the more expensive it gets. But what can cause my water bill to go up that much that fast? So is it for me watering my lawn or uh, washing my cat? I, I couldn't understand exactly where was all the water going. So I take a close look at it, and the more water I use, the more expensive it gets. First it doubles, and then it triples. And then I also looked at the other charges that were on my bill, and a good half of my bill was associated with water development projects, conservation surcharges, and all these other pension plans and everything. So I was going, okay, wait, wait, wait. I didn't sign up for all this. Why are we paying for all these new dams, uh, uh, salt water purification plants and all that? Uh, why do we need all this? Well, it's because we still use more water than can be naturally made available. Okay, so we have water, but not enough. So what are we supposed to do about this? Well, what if I told you you have water, you've already paid for it, but you're wasting half of it, and you're actually paying people to waste it? Well, this is called <laughs> gray water. So what is gray water? It's water coming from your shower, your sink, and your laundry machine. I mean, your laundry machine. <laughs> All right, so um, this is gray water, but uh, where is it all going? Well, 59% uh, of a residence wastewater is gray water, and 20% of a commercial residence, a commercial uh, establishment, is gray water. So this is a lot of water we're sending down to the sewer, and so we're paying people to get rid of this water, and you can use all this water on your landscape. Now, you can meet all of your landscape irrigation demands with this gray water. So you could cut your water bill in half tomorrow just reusing gray water. So is all water leaving your house gray water? No. Any kitchen sink water, dishwasher water, or toilet water is black water and has to go to the sewer. Okay, so we have a lot of water we're talking about. Half of your water is gray water. So exactly how much of your water is gray water? Where is it coming from? Where can you capture it from? For an average residence, for a single family home, you have two bedrooms, um, you have one bath, and so you have 25 gallons per person per day uh, is produced out of your shower for a 10 minute shower. And then for a sink, 25 gallons per person per day. And then you have a laundry machine, 15 gallons per person per day, every single day. And that adds up to 195 gallons every single day you guys are producing a lot of wastewater that could be reused on your site. So when you're talking about how much water you, you want to uh, uh, reclaim, it all adds up the more you gather on your, your, your building. So what's in gray water? Well, you're talking about anything you're sending down your, your drain. Dirt, soap and grit, hair, it all uh, has to get filtered out, but it's actually really easy to filter. So you're just trying to clean the water so you don't clog your irrigation system. And you also have a lot of storm water that comes on your, your site every single year, but we consider it a menace or hazard, right? But this is water you could also reuse. Now, storm water is just, the storm water runoff I'm mentioning is the water that doesn't get infiltrated into the ground. So any water that runs off your site, let's say your rooftop, your driveway, any hard surface, that storm water you could capture and reuse later. Okay, so you have the water. What are you supposed to do with it? Well, the first thing to understand is you have to look at your site-specific goals and your site constraints. So do you want to reuse storm water to flush your toilets? Do you want to reuse gray water to irrigate all your, your yard? Um, how much gray water can you capture? How much storm water is there on your site? Do you want to combine it or separate the two kinds of water? Well, storm water you can store and capture and, and keep around as long as you want because it's so clean. Gray water, you have to get rid of it within 24 hours. And then, of course, you want to just look at your own personal finances. What can you invest? And, of course, you have to look at your plumbing. 
Sometimes the layout of your house doesn't make it so you can capture gray water from every single fixture. <coughs> so when you're looking at your water balance, the thing to understand that's unique to California and the Southwest in general is all the water comes when we need the water the least. So water comes in the winter where you have the lowest irrigation demand, and then in the dry summer, you have the highest irrigation demand. So the whole point of storing storm water is to take it when you have too much and then use it when you have uh, a high demand and low amount of natural available water. Gray water, you produce around the same amount of gray water throughout the year. So you have a pretty steady supply that can last you and meet all of your irrigation demands. Now when you're talking about uh, reusing wastewater, in order to make it last as long as possible, you want to lessen your demand. So when you're looking at a conventional landscape, it uses quite a bit of water. You're talking about trees, turf. When you're looking at a water efficient landscape with natives, drip systems, that uses about half of the amount of water compared to conventional landscape. So what do you do with all this gray water? Well, you have to treat it, but the self-cleaning filters and water catchment tanks, there's a wide assortment and they're a very low cost. And you could also combine them with a biological treatment system that helps make it more robust and uh, efficient. So as of August of 2009, anyone and everyone can have a laundry to landscape gray water system without a permit. This means all of you can do it yourself. Now I just ask that you go on the internet to educate yourselves so that you keep your family and the groundwater safe from the potential contaminants that are in gray water. All right, so now I'm going to talk to you about a local project uh, for gray water reuse. Now a developer in uh, Fort Ord, Lower Stillwell, which is in Seaside, California, has over 100 units that they want to redo the landscape, but they also wanted to conserve uh, water and lessen their water bill. So um, redesigning it with California natives was one part, but they wanted to meet all the irrigation demands with gray water. So they captured the shower water, the sink water, and uh, the laundry water from only half of the units, and that's enough gray water to supply the landscape irrigation for all of the units for all the houses. So this is an important example where this is just an average uh, quiet uh, community that uh, uh, they have just turf grass that uh, browns out during the summer. They're not happy with what they have. They're not happy with water bills, but they can uh, find a cost-effective solution to that problem. Now this also helps solve a, a local problem that's uh, ever, ever increasing is saltwater intrusion. Now you can see here uh, uh, Seaside in the south, Salinas in the east, and Elkhorn Slough in the north. This is the whole area um, that is being intruded upon by salt water. Why? Because we're drawing out more water from the groundwater than is naturally being replenished down into the groundwater. So if you look at uh, the green area, that's uh, 1990, uh, 1944. Um, salt water started intruding, and then all the way over to uh, 2007, 60 years later, it's moved almost all the way into Salinas. So this is impacting our cult uh, agriculture and uh, impacting our water quality for our water sources. So by reusing gray water, the, the, that little development, that little community, is um, lessened their water consumption by half, so that helps to slow down the saltwater intrusion problem. And you can do this with a lot of really beautiful landscape plants as well. California native plants are sustainable and resilient. So the lesson is gray water and stormwater reuse saves you money and conserves resources. And all of us have a responsibility to use our water wisely. And it's only together that we can really uh, do something about our resource problem in the future and uh, uh, make uh, our communities sustainable. Thank you very much.